How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to learn how we can create snippets in Z. And the snippets which I'll be showing you today are going to be the same snippets which I use to speed up my workflow in Python. For example, you might see me sometimes type in main and just tap on enter and that will set up my if name is equal to main check with my main entry point. And this is just very convenient because I don't have to type all of this out. Also, when I'm creating a function, I have my snippet here, which allows me to give it a function name, such as connect, provide some arguments or parameters to define a return type and to actually implement some functionality. If I choose not to implement any functionality, it's going to raise a not implemented error, which is the default behavior I want all of my functions to have. Another good example would be a quick try and accept block. So here I named it pyTry, and what it does is try the following code. So here we can raise some sort of exception, such as a value error. And we're just going to pretend that this was raised by trying to convert a string to something. And maybe we will just try to do it the proper way. So the int of 10. Now, when we run this, what it's going to say is that I got a value error with the following message, which is the reason. And you can also use snippets for dummy data. For example, here we might have some names of type list of string. And usually I type them all out by hand, but now I can just type in pi names and it's going to insert those names. So that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do today in Z. Now, if you've never tried Z before, you can follow the link in the description box down below and download Z for free. But otherwise, let's check out how we can configure these snippets in Z. Now, first of all, you want to open up the command palette. And on Mac, all you have to do is hold down Shift Command plus P and this will open up the command palette. And the next thing you want to do here is search for snippets and configure snippets. Then you want to specify that this should be for Python. And this is going to open up the python.json file. Now by default, you should have nothing in this file. These are the ones I created earlier. So I'm going to delete all of those and now we can create them from scratch together. And the very first one we're going to create is the main entry point. So here we're going to create a dictionary of items. And the first one is going to be called main entry point. Then we will open up another pair of curly brackets and we will provide a prefix. And the prefix is essentially the shortcut that you want to use to trigger this snippet. And I'm going to call this pi main. Then we can insert a description that tells us a little bit about the snippet. And I will call this main entry point template. And now below that, we want to create the actual code that we want to insert into Z or into the script when we type this prefix. So this will be the body. And inside here, we need to pass in a list of lines. Now, the first one is going to be def main, which returns none. And then the second line will contain a tab or four spaces. So one, two, three, four, and we'll pass in a dollar sign followed by one and the placeholder. This part here defines where we want the cursor to start at. And this right here is the default value. Now below this, we want some spaces. So I'm going to add an empty string and an empty string. And then we want to create the if name is equal to main check. So if name is equal to main, start a new line and then one, two, three, four, main. And at the bottom, we'll add one new line. And that will be our very first snippet. To test it out, save this file and go to main.py. And here you can type in pi main. And what it should do is create this main entry point and the if name is equal to main check. As you can see here, we have a placeholder, which is just an ellipsis, but we can enter anything such as print or a pint. If you're an alcoholic, print hello world. And then we can run the code and it will run normally. Next, I'm going to show you how to create a snippet which allows you to quickly create a function. So right below, we're going to create one called create a function. And inside here, the prefix will be set to pi def and the description will be set to function template. Now the body is going to be quite straightforward. So here we need to create a new array and pass in the lines. And the first line is going to be def dollar sign curly brackets and we will insert one because this will be the first position for the cursor. And we're going to call this default new function. Then we're going to open up a pair of parentheses and we're going to set the second position of the cursor here. And since we don't want any defaults, we can just type in dollar sign 
2. You only use the curly bracket syntax if you want to add a default value. And this will return dollar sign curly brackets 3 with the default value of none. So that's going to be the first line. Then the second line will be four spaces. And since this is a lot to type out, I'm just going to paste this in. So here we're going to have the fourth position and the default value is going to be raise, not implemented error. And here we can refer to dollar sign one again, if we want to insert the exact same value for both of these so that we get the same name here and here. And all it's going to do is say that this function was not implemented. Now with that being done, we can go back to main and test it out. So here we can type in def or pi def. We just need to be specific enough to trigger this snippet. So typing def can be enough. Now that's going to start at new function, but if we want to change this to connect, we can. And since we have the dollar sign with one here, it's going to edit both of these since these are both set to dollar sign one, which is the first position. Then we can tap on tab if we want to add some parameters. And here we can add something such as attempts because maybe we want to attempt to connect a certain amount of times and say that this should be of type integer. And what this should return is a Boolean and the Boolean will define whether we connected or not. Now, if we're not sure about the functionality just yet, we can leave it as is and raise a not implemented error, which is great because now when we try to call it and type in connect and add, I don't know, three attempts, we're going to get a not implemented error that connect was not implemented. So we can always implement that later. Otherwise you can implement the functionality and do whatever you want. Connected, return true. But let's go back to python.json and create a couple more of these snippets. So right below, I'm going to create one called quick debug. And the prefix here will be set to pi debug. The description will say quick debug and the body is going to look like this. So as always, we need to open up a new array and pass in the lines. And we will type in print the formatted string of dollar sign curly braces one with the default set to name equals curly braces dollar sign curly braces two var. And the second line is going to be set to dollar sign zero. This position here is always going to be the last position. Everything else should start from one onwards. So now let's go back to main and type in quick debug. Or before we do that, let's create a variable such as age, which will be of type integer, and that will be set to 100. Then we can test it out by typing in debug and we need to find that. So we'll just type in pi debug and it's going to print that the age is set to the age. And each time we tap on tab, it's going to move the cursor to that position. And the final time we tap on tab, it's going to move it to the next line because dollar sign zero is on this line over here. Now, when we run this, we should get that the age is equal to 100. Something better that we can do here is type in dollar sign one and we don't even need the placeholder because any name we insert here is going to equal this variable over here. And also I'm going to change this to something different such as QDebug for quick debug. So now we can type in QDebug, pass in the age, tap on enter, and it's going to be as quick as that. But going back to python.json, I'm going to leave it at dollar sign two and variable because maybe we want to give it a different name over here although I still want this to be called quick debug. So now we can go back, we can type in quick debug. Here we can say my age and pass in the age. And there we go. Now for the last two, I'm just going to paste them in and explain them real quickly. So the first one is called quick try and accept and the prefix will be set to pi try. Then the description just tells us that it's a quick try and accept block template. Now for the body, the first line is going to contain try then with four spaces, we're going to pass in the first placeholder. Then since this is supposed to be very quick and dirty, I'm just going to accept every exception as E, and then I'm going to print the F string of the type of E and the name gives the following error. And then the cursor should end here. Then we have the dummy data with a prefix of pi names. The description is dummy data, and that's something you can change, make it more specific, say that it returns a list of names. And for the body, we literally just create that variable in the form of a string. Now to use both of these, we can just go back to main.py, type in try or a pi try, create some code that raises an error. So one divided by zero, run it, and it should tell us that we have a zero division error. 
because we tried to divide by zero. Otherwise, if we need some dummy data, we can just type in pi names and it will insert those names. So that's how you can create snippets for Python in Z. And in case you just want to copy all of my Python snippets, I am going to leave a link in the description box down below to my GitHub repository. So all you need to do is copy all of these and paste it inside the Python JSON file in Z. So feel free to use these to adapt them or to even add more. And if you have any ideas for snippets, please leave them in the comment section down below. I would love to hear about them. I might even start using them or make another video regarding them. So your yeah, comments will be very useful here. But yeah, that's really all I wanted to cover in today's video. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.